Graphene is made of carbon atoms. So let's consider uh, the structure and uh, uh, properties of, of graphene. We start with the basic uh, elementary considerations of what is graphene and uh, how, it's, uh, how it behaves. And we start with the structural properties and we move to the electronic properties. So graphene is made of carbon atoms and the, the carbon in from the chemistry course we know it consists of uh, two s1 electrons two s2 electrons and two p2 electrons and then usually you draw this diagram on energy levels so one s one s2 electrons here then you have two s2 electrons and then you have um, uh, two p2 electrons and that's a ground state There's also exciting state exists where um, where one of these uh, two s two electrons is uh, promoted to two uh, p orbital, and then you will have um, the following structure. In the excited state. Then those um, those four electrons they can hybridize and they form the sp sp hybrids hybrid orbitals. As energy is more um, is actually more expensive to form these hybrids and is more expensive to have the excited state. But when you form a chemical bonds, you actually gain gain the energy when you uh, have a new structure which has a, a lower energy than if you have it in the in the ground state. So it's uh, it happens when you have the, the chemical reactions. And uh, the carbon atoms in graphene, they are in sp, sp2 hybridization. So we, uh, and for the considerations, we can ignore, we can ignore this uh, 1s orbital, which is very close to nucleus, so it doesn't contribute to chemical reactions. And then if we look at the remaining four electrons, they can form like um, three types of hybrids when um, um, when all this is our excited state so this is this case when it forms sp3 hybrids so they all now on the same energy so those are all three uh, sp sp3 hybridized electrons this is normally happen in diamond in material science or in methane in uh, in chemistry chemical molecules like methane and it has a tetrahedral orientation and the, the orbitals looks like these um, asymmetric uh, dumbbells and they um, they are oriented in the tetrahedron to increase the uh, repulsion between the electron clouds so the angle will be something like one, 109 or something like that, but okay, that's not relevant for our consideration. In the sp2 hybridization, so in, in the, the sp2 hybridization, you will have three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and then you have um, a slightly higher energy uh, 2p, 2pz orbital. You have three sp2 hybrids and and this uh, this is basically what forms the chemical structure uh, the bonds in gra in graphene graphite or in benzene molecule and then you also have a uh, sp hybridization like acetylene where you have two hybrids and the two Unpaired uh, uh, PY and PZ orbitals, and this is two sp hybrids. So now, if you focus on the on the sp two hybridization, um, these uh, these orbitals they also look like asymmetric asymmetric dumbbells, and because there's three of them, they form a um, they form a planar 
planner structure and the uh, at angle of 120 degrees away from each other again to increase the, the repulsion the distance between the electrons to avoid the electron electron repulsions between the orbitals. And then you can you can see how this becomes then honeycomb lattice because then you have like three three binding sites or so the, the places where the the orbitals can overlap and form a chemical bonds. So if you have um, let's say if you have two carbon atoms in the sp2 hybridization then there will be these orbitals they have sufficiently large distance so they will overlap and they form again the hybrids now they will form the molecular orbitals so if you have two of those uh, hybrid orbitals then they will form the the bonding and anti-bonding states so the quantum mechanically you have this sigma and sigma star bonds from the uh, from the sp2 hybrids and, uh, and then you will also have remaining remaining pz orbitals those will also overlap and will also hybridize and form so you have two pz orbitals uh, from two carbon atoms so this is like c1 c2 c1 c2 and they will also form a bound state it's called pi and this is a pi star so this is the crossing and decrossing or bonding and debonding orbitals. We have symmetric and symmetric wave functions. The usually you can then because you, you see there is a strong overlap between these um, these sp3 hybrids. So let me draw uh, remaining orbitals. And there will be another carbon atom somewhere here, so we'll have the, the overlaps and so on. So this will be our sigma bonds. But then you also have um, the pz orbitals. They are at 90 degrees again to increase the, the repulsion between the, the electron clouds. So they will be like going up and down out of the plane or out of this plane and they are at further distance so the overlap between them is much smaller okay in this cartoon it looks like they don't overlap but actually in reality i think they're they're kind of like larger so they have some small overlap and uh, this means the stay energy will be will be quite smaller so when we let's let me let me rewrite again these parts about sigma and and uh, and pi states so if you have very strong overlap between the orbitals, the strong overlap means the strong hybridization, and now the distance between the, the symmetric and anti-symmetric wave functions will be quite a large. So you have a large distance between the sigma and the sigma star in, in, term, in case of this large overlap. And you will have now, if we consider the electrons, uh, so this is a sigma, this is a sp2 sp2 and this is a pz and the pz of two carbon atoms so you will have much smaller now a distance between the the pi and pi star so here pi and pi star and they the, the like the smaller distance between them also means that they may be more relevant for electronic transport than those guys so those usually the sigma bonds they are responsible for very strong um, structural properties so the they are responsible for exceptional structural rigidity exceptional structural prop strength structural properties And the, and the pi orbitals, they allow conductivity. So they're kind of like more or less moving uh, freely. So they, they de delocalized. Maybe you, you you know from the chemistry course, you, your, the pi electrons in benzene 
ring they're delocalized over the entire ring so those allow conduction and we have one electron in per one carbon atom for pi orbitals so each of those carbon atoms they can cont they contribute one electron and this means uh, the pi orbitals will be half um, the all these bonds formed by by the by the pi orbitals they will be half filled <clears throat> 